episode 73. We did it. This is the One Extraordinary Marriage Podcast, home of the Seven Days of Sex Challenge, featuring your hosts, the authors of the groundbreaking new book, Stripped Down, Tony and Elisa DiLorenzo. Welcome back to One Extraordinary Marriage, where we talk about life, love, and the pursuit of intimacy. You're here with Elisa DiLorenzo. And Tony DiLorenzo. And we are here after the seven days of sex challenge. We did it. We did it. We did it. The last couple of days were a little tough, but we made it happen. We made it happen. As Our best did, challenge yet. Yes. Yeah. Without a doubt. Yep. I would agree. Without it. Well, of the seven days challenges. Yes. Out of the three that we've done thus right. far. Mm-hmm. Um, but more excitingly for us, because we've done this before, is the fact that so many of you have done it. Mm -hmm. there were amazing stories, posts, emails uh, all over the site this week. Yeah. And for those of you who haven't gone back, you know, and if you're looking and sort of going, well, can I do this? Can we not? You know, we're too busy. We have kids. We would say, go through those comments. Go read what these people have gone through. Mm -hmm. Other couples who have probably similar situations that, you have going on right now and see what they did read their stories because you can follow the comments and you'll see some of them go hey we missed last night but you know what we're going to still get up on it and we're going to do it and some people made five out of seven or six out of seven they they made it a priority and they made it happen i'm just laughing at your get up on it get up Uh, on it yeah i mean there's so much innuendo this week um sure is yeah it was just you know this is our third year doing it second time that we've opened it up to the community and we're just blown away every year at how marriages are transformed in one week. Right. And you know, that's not to say that this is, you know, and I've commented to some of you women that have written in, you know, about the seven days of sex challenge. This is not a magic pill. Mm -mm. This is not, you know, this is not going to have a lasting impact on your marriage unless you choose for it to having a lasting impact, but to hear from so many of you how your eyes and minds have been open to the potential in your marriage is, it's amazing to me. You know, those of you that have been married lots and lots of years that are just like, oh, you know, we haven't done this since our honeymoon. Um, There's one couple, 41 years. Yahoo! Uh, I think he's 63. I think he said 63 and his wife was right up there as well. I mean, so if you're a, you know, 20 something, 30 something going, oh, I can't do this. There are couples in their 60s doing this. And he even said, he's like, hey, I'm not no 21 year old and you got to realize you're not 21 anymore, but they still made it happen. And I think that that right there can show even us, Elisa and I, who are going to be married 15 years, come mm-hmm. up October, that holy cow, we could be doing this into our 60s. And I think last year we had a couple that was in their 70s. Uh, there was another couple last year that had been married 40 plus years. Yeah. And um, I, yeah, I was just doing the math on that. I'm like, oh, good grief. That's going to be like you know our 25th annual seven days of sex challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, man! Um, I, I, no, we're just la- uh, we were actually commenting. Uh, I don't know if we can make the it other up day more. that because of when we did last year's challenge, we actually did, which was in June. We actually pulled off two challenges in a calendar year, right? Um, for us with this one and last year, and you know, it, it's the couple that's been married forty years. You know, there were there were a couple days there in the middle of the week where there was discussion going on between those older couples and those yeah, and the was. younger couples, and you know. Those in the younger category were saying, you know, it's so amazing that these couples that have been married for years and years, you know, they're still having sex and they're still doing all this kind of stuff. And, and one day, one of the older couples, and I, you know, quotes around all of that, um, wrote back and said, you know what? I'm really impressed with those of you younger couples mm-hmm. that are doing this because you have challenges that we don't have. 
you know, yes, we older couples, we might be a little tired. Parts might not work the way they used to. Uh, we might not yeah. have the stamina, but we don't have kids running around. We don't have all of the daily obligations of child rearing and parenting mm-hmm. that those of us with younger kids do. Mm-hmm. You know, we had the night where we're right in the middle of everything and we hear our eight year old <laughs> open his door. Yeah, we are we are right in the middle of some of the most amazing oral sex we were having this week. And all of a sudden we hear Click. the door and it, as many <laughs> of you know, that sort of breaks the mood there a little because you're sitting there going, Okay, what's gonna happen? And there's a there's there's a lot that could have happened right there. We could have just given up. We could have just rolled over and said, you know what? Forget it. And pouted and just and just gone to our sides of the bed. Or what we chose to do, because we are in the challenge, is we just sort of let that go. Elisa looked at me and she's like, that sort of killed the mood. And I said, yeah, you know what? I sort of, It sort of killed the mood for me too. But we are still committed to each other. And so instead of going further with that we just had a nice quickie Mm -hmm. which ended up being fantastic for us but realize that you know those things happen to us too it happens to all of us yeah somebody posted that their two-year-old was conspiring against them yeah all week you know it's, it's it's the one week that the child who sleeps all the time isn't sleeping chooses not to sleep yeah you know and so you know maybe you can't get That's, creative because you've got to be in the bedroom that has a door lock on it. Okay. Yeah. You know what you've got, if you're, if you have you know a master bedroom with the bathroom in there then just use the shower or use, you know, get on the floor. Realize there is a dark force, the uh-huh. devil who's out there wanting to mess this up. Realize that when good is about to happen and you are trying to be intimate with your spouse physically, um, spiritually, emotionally, there is this presence of the devil who wants to break it apart Mm -hmm. because there is no more. He doesn't get, he gets so much joy from seeing you stop this. Well, and think about it, you know, when marriages disintegrate, it's not just the husband, you know, if you have children, it's not just the husband and the wife who are made miserable, Mm -hmm. but it impacts your children for generations. Right. You know, so if the devil can get a stronghold into your marriage, that could have implications beyond what you can even measure, you know? So spending this week focusing on building the intimacy in your marriage and, you know, we had romantic stories. I mean, there were couples, there was one couple who, you know, she took them in and out for dinner and then they went up on their roof and there are candles all around and the music's on, you know, romantic nights. There was a couple that renewed their vows. Yeah. I remember that. At the end of the week, you know, so many of you made this challenge your own and really found new levels, experienced things that you didn't even expect. Right. We heard that time and time again as the week went on that, you know, this is exceeding our expectations. We didn't know how this was going to reconnect us. We didn't know what we were going to get out of this. We didn't know how this was going to change our marriage. You know, it seems at the onset, like, okay, we're going to have sex for seven days. Um, Great. Okay. You know, we, you know, we can do this. Mm -hmm. And to hear so many of you talk about the challenges that you faced and the treasures that you gained this week. Right. You know, hearing the stories of romance, hearing the stories of connection, it blows us away every time we do this. It does. Um, It it totally does. I mean, it's amazing the people that, um, gosh, they just, they defy all odds, mm-hmm. all odds and make it happen. This year I think was just very special. At least and I did all video for each day and we will continue to do that in the future because that really, I feel had much more impact on you guys out there who were doing the challenge or even if you weren't doing the challenge, you were watching those videos. I just felt that those videos for you guys had impact. You could hear it. You could see what we were talking about. And this year we just had so much more conversation. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, last year, a lot of people were just checking in and just sort of going check. I'm, 
we did it, da 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 da. Some people got into it. But this year, so many of you were just vocal and just really sharing what was happening. And not just vocal with us, but vocal with each other. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what it's about, you guys. That's what the we have worked so hard for as a community where you can come and you can talk about this mm-hmm. sort of stuff. You can talk about your intimacy in, in, um, in, in an environment where you feel safe. Absolutely. You know, that's what it's about. And we do monitor it. I mean, I, I had a couple of spammers out there uh, jumping on and, and I got on it and got rid of all that junk. But, you know, what we want you to do is we want you to feel safe in this environment so you can talk about your intimacy Mm -hmm. and what is happening with you guys. You know, it was great to see the support from other couples, too, who weren't able to participate in the the challenge from the sexual standpoint. Right. But who were still making intimacy a priority in Mm -hmm. their marriage this week. And that's something uh, Tony and I were talking about this weekend, just that. You know, this is something, if, you know, if you're looking at your marriage and you know, we talk about the six forms of intimacy all the time, you know, recreational, financial, spiritual, physical, emotional, intellectual, and maybe you're looking at your parents and saying, you know, we got this physical thing. We got this pretty nailed down. You know, this is good. We've got a lot of strength here, but maybe there's another area of your marriage that you're like, wow, we could really eh, not feeling it. You know, like we could really use some, some reinforcements here. Right. You can take this challenge and really apply the principles to whatever area mm-hmm. of intimacy needs a little, you know, shoring up. Right. And in in the reason we are we call this we did it is because obviously we did it this week. But really we want to see you guys hit the we did it in your marriage. Mm-hmm. And like Elisa was saying, with the different forms of intimacies that we have in our marriage, you know, the physical sexual is just one component of it. And we love doing that one because it does bring us together. It does prioritize our marriage a lot more when we do this week. And it really makes us realize how blessed we are. Mm -hmm. But for those of you out there who, you know, like Elisa said, maybe the physical part of it is, is good. Maybe it's not right now. Maybe you need to spend seven days in emotional intimacy. Mm-hmm. And this way you can move more towards heightening the physical and sexual intimacy. Maybe you're stuck right now in a rut when it comes to your finances, but you don't want to really talk about it. Maybe you need to have a seven days of finance challenge where for seven days you guys are going to really sit down and start working on this together. It's almost... You know, a a seven day period is that period where you prioritize what's going on and you put that at the forefront. So that way you can bust through some of these walls that you guys have. And it's in a concentrated period of time, which allows you to really discuss it. So what we heard one couple say this week um, in the comments was, you know, because they were having so much sex, it allowed them to talk about it. And it was something she wasn't able to do because the sex wasn't happening regular enough to know what was really the issue or what the problems were. But by doing it seven days in a row, you tend to start finding out what's working and what isn't. You start to realize some of the issues that you want to start talking about. Mm -hmm. And so say you're having a problem communicating, you know, maybe you're just stuck, you know, maybe it's time for you guys to sit down and go, okay, next week, Sunday to Saturday, we are going to make emotional and intellectual intimacy, a priority in our marriage. Mm -hmm. And you can go right back through our videos and instead of, Inserting sex, insert communication, Mm -hmm. calendar it, you know, we're going to put this on the calendar. We're going to make time for each other, bust out your calendars and put it on the calendars, change it up. Maybe you always talk in the living room. Maybe you always talk in the kitchen. Maybe it's in your bedroom before it, before 
uh, right. going to bed. You know, look at the times when you're doing this. Look at where you're where you're having these conversations. Mm-hmm. Maybe you need to change it up a little bit. You know, for Elisa and I to have a heart to heart right before bed isn't going to happen. One, I'm too damn tired. Two, my brain's not in the right spot. And three, really, I just want to, I, I don't want to talk about it then. So if, if Elisa and I have to speak about something, it's usually probably after the kids go to bed or in the morning time mm-hmm. when the kids are at school. But, you, you know, we've learned that over the years. Right. And so maybe for you, you're sitting here going, we need to have a breakthrough in our communication. Sit down and do it. Finances, another big one. You know, maybe maybe the money is tight. Maybe there's an abundance of money and you just need to figure out where the heck to start putting it. You need to get on the same page. Maybe you need a will. Maybe you need life insurance. You know, maybe there's some other planning that needs to happen. Again, calendar the time for a week. Make yourselves the priority, your marriage that priority. Yeah, and so many of you said what a difference it made knowing that this is what was going to happen. I mean, you knew you were going to have sex every day, but it also meant that you had to communicate. I mean, I, I remember talking to you guys about this before we even started the challenge about the fact that if you're going to be intimate for seven days in a row, you really have to talk through some of the stuff. You know, you mm-hmm. don't you don't get the luxury of going to bed mad and letting it fester because guess what? You it, It's a challenge mm-hmm. to be intimate with somebody that you're ticked off at. Um, oh my gosh, I just totally lost my train of thought. Wow. Wow. Okay. Where was I going with that? Well, you're a little sleepy and run down from the week. Apparently. Oh, well, but I, okay. Hmm. Total detour here. I, I do have to go back to the calendar thing. Okay. And, and making it a pri- Oh, that's what I was talking about. Making things a priority. You know, even for us, like we sat down beginning of the week and we're like, okay, here's where we're going to go. And then Friday morning came and I was just slammed with obligations and I hadn't looked at my calendar yet for the morning. And Tony's like, so we're, we're on for this morning. And I just looked at him like deer in the headlights. Oh, okay. <laughs> and you know, we made it work. We didn't have sex that morning. You know, life got rearranged. We ended up having sex Friday night. Um, but that was even an instance where, you know, it was on the calendar. And we heard, you know, from a number of you that it didn't happen on certain nights, even with it being on the calendar. Mm-hmm. You know, if we have trouble getting it done when it's on the calendar, how many of you are not getting it done because it never makes it to your calendar? You've got to be deliberate about the intimacy in your marriage. In all, all in forms. all forms. Spontaneity does not cut it in marriage if you're just leaving this stuff to chance, chances are it's not going to happen. Yeah. And when we've done small groups on uh strip down 13 keys to unlocking intimacy in your marriage, you can pick that up at one extraordinary marriage.com and go to the store and you can follow along. We talk about all this stuff and more in that book. But when we bring that up, when we bring up calendar, it spontaneity always comes up. And the greatest question we always ask back, well, how spontaneous is your spontaneous? I mean, how often, how often are you doing it? And when it is spontaneous, how good is it? And usually we'll get stares and people will come up with some half ass comments in my opinion. And as we dive into it more, they begin to realize that, you know what? You're right. Well, the the best comment we had when we were doing this in a small group was when the wife looked at, you know, the husband makes the comment, well, I like it to be spontaneous. And the wife looks at the husband and says, yeah, how's that working out for you? Yeah. Zing. Hello. Yeah. You know, spont- spontaneity is, is overrated. You know, we live in life here, folks. We don't live in, we don't live on the TV, you know, where, where all this amazing stuff happens. I mean, well, and I even commented back to somebody this week you know, we had our time scheduled, but within those scheduled times, you know, I didn't know if I was wearing the sexy new underwear that Tony got me or if we were going to be in the living room or candles, you, candles or what was going to happen. make it outside this week. It's too dang cold. It was been cold in San Diego. Dang um, but so, you know, you can still have spontaneity within those encounters. Right. 
the thing is, is that the encounters are scheduled. Right. And, and, and we're talking about sexual. If, if, if you're, if you're digging into an emotional or a spiritual or a financial intimacy, obviously the spontaneity isn't as big. Right. And, and you're going to be a little bit more focused and structured mm-hmm. with some of the other forms of intimacy, especially, you know, those, I don't want to say those big ones, but those ones that require a lot more emotional energy. Mm-hmm. You know, you're going to, you know, if you're tackling your finances, you're going to need to say, okay, here's, here's what we're feeling like we need to work on. You know, we need to develop a plan and we need to look at the budget or we need to look at our wills. And, you know, those take a lot more emotional energy Mm -hmm. so that you can't necessarily bring as much spontaneity into it. You know, whereas if you're doing the recreational intimacy and you're like, all right, well, you know, we're scheduled to go do something from one to three. You can either hit the beach or go for a hike or go for a bike ride and, you know, wing it. So recreational intimacy has, you know, just by its very nature, a lot more spontaneity built in. Um, Yeah, it does. But at the same time, recreational intimacy can and and needs to be planned out just like just like you and I, Elisa and I have decided that we are going to jump on a uh, workout program. Um, I'm going to be doing insanity and Elisa is going to be doing the Brazilian butt lift by Beachbody as well. And, And I know it sounds funny. You had the Brazilian blowout. On your uh, hair? my hair. I'm like, yeah, I forgot I did that on my hair. <laughs> yeah, apparently everything's going Brazilian. Yeah. Um, but we had to make the commitment to each other. Mm-hmm. I've been riding for years. I mean, seven years now, anywhere from five to 6,000 miles a year. I'm a little burned. I'm just, right now, I'm just a little tired of it. Um, not that I'm going to give it up, but I just, there's some other things I want to do. And Elise and I have been wanting to connect I know for Elisa, she went through her transformation challenge earlier in the year, found great success since we've gone back from Puerto Rico has been sort of up and down, up and down with it. And so we sort of came together and said, what can we do for 60 days together? Mm-hmm. What can we do? We have different goals. Elisa really wants to work on that midsection down to the thigh area. Yeah. Me, I want to work on more upper body. My legs are fine from riding as much as I do. Understatement. Yeah, I have plenty of legs. And I will be working on that with insanity, but I'm, I really want to work more my core working, you know, trying to get more of my six pack, my upper body, but we had to make an, a, a commitment to each other. Mm-hmm. And so we found a way to do this. Right. Because as much as, you know, we enjoy being physical and Tony is, you know, more the athlete in the couple, um, more the athlete. More the athlete. <laughs> you are. Okay. I'm not. Um, I would never claim to be athletic. But it was one of those things where I don't want to do Tony's workouts and I definitely don't want to do Tony's workout, like whatever, you know, insanity. I don't want to do it with him. I feel it just doesn't work for me to be doing the same workout with him at the same time. And there are a lot of you that probably feel that way, whether it's working out or, you know, whatever your, whatever your thing is, you don't, you want to, be physical. You want to be doing and fit and, and that type of thing, but you don't necessarily want to do it at the same time in the same space with your spouse. But like for us, the recreational intimacy, doing these workouts, we've determined that we're going to be accountable to each other. Right. We've talked about this. We've got goals. We know what each other's goals are. So we're having those discussions. It's not like, Hey, I'm just going to do this. I'll meet up with you in 60 days. It's like, no, we're, we're planning for it. We're talking, you know, cleaning up space so that we can work out. We're, um, looking at our, looking at our nutrition, look, looking at nutrition, looking at our calendars, really just bringing all of those same things, those same components that we use in the challenge to a different form of intimacy. Right. Right. Cause we're going to have to calendar our time because our whole goal is that, you know, Elisa will be doing her workouts inside and I'll be doing mine in the garage. Mm hmm. You know, we, it, it'll be a little tough if we're running two DVDs at the same time in the same space. But what this requires us to do is that it's going to require us to wake up together in the morning, you know. <laughs> okay, I have to tell a funny story. <laughs> he brought it up. So this is, we're recording Sunday night. So Sunday morning, okay. Saturday night. No, wait okay. a minute. Hold on. I, l- let's just leave this up. Busy, busy, okay. busy. We'll, we'll talk about, oh, we'll oh, talk about our intellectual okay. intimacy in a minute. 
Uh, this is my story. You brought okay. it up. So Saturday night, Tony goes to bed and says, I'm going to get up in the morning and ride. I'm set after, my after we finished the seven days of sex. After we finished the challenge. Which course. was about 1130 ish last night. No, it was early last night. No. Oh, yes, it was. No. Yes. It was? Yes. It was like 1030. Was it 1130 the fa- Friday yes. night? Yes. Okay. Um, I, I must have been really tired yesterday because I you was were exhausted. Out. Anyway, so Tony says, I'm setting my alarm clock. I'm getting up in the morning to go ride. So Tony's alarm clock, which I didn't know this at the time, it would have really irritated me, goes off at 5.20. Because I wanted to get up for a bike ride because we were gonna, we had things to do. We, right. we had church. We had all our stuff we so wanted how, to do today. How, how many minutes is your snooze? Four. Four. So 5.24, 5.28, actually, 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 when it goes off at 5.20, it's actually eight minutes ahead. So it's actually like 5.12. Oh, great. Even better. <laughs> things I don't need to know. <laughs> And so finally, I'm like, why is your alarm clock? Why why have you not turned that off? He's like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Why it's still going off? I'm like, well, just turn off the clock. Because mm. he was so tired from yesterday. Because yesterday, we had wonderful intellectual intimacy. Mm-hmm. There was an event, um, Mommy for Nerds, which is an organization that supports work-at-home moms, mm-hmm. had their second annual Big Hat Tea yep. up in Rancho Cucamonga. And... I was up there as a vendor and Tony and Dustin ha- were corporate table sponsors through Fit Marriage. Right. And so this is the first time that Tony and I have gone and done an event together with any of our businesses. And yes. it was an amazing day. Oh, we had a blast. Just the, the time spent, you know, I've never done my Leah Sophia stuff in front of Tony before. Mm-hmm. Um, and so to, to have him there helping me set up the table and, you know, around when I'm talking to the women and, and just having him see all of these other women that are doing phenomenal things with their own businesses and, and just the creativity. And, you know, we had the whole day. We had the whole drive up there to talk about what's going on in our businesses. We were there together at this event, which had amazing speakers. And then we had to drive home just to kind of wrap up the day. And so we spent a whole day focused really on our intellectual and emotional intimacy, dreaming about our future, talking about our plans. Mm -hmm. And again, it was intentional. You know, when, when he and Dustin had first mentioned this event, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do it. And you know, we didn't know at the time that Tony was going to go. And then when it worked out that we were going to be able to do this together, it was great. I'm like looking forward to the next event. I'm like, when can we go do something else? Yeah, I am too. And, And for all of you moms out there, especially you working stay at home type moms that are work at home moms. Okay. Work at home. I just, <laughs> like you're just, all over the place with that one. I just got some daggers shot at me. No, you know. Um, check out mommy preneurs, really cool organization that they're, uh, they've started up in 2010, uh, mainly in that LA sort of, um, Riverside County right now, but they, they do have a chapter here in San Diego starting up. Check it out. I mean, just what a wonderful group of women. And like Elisa said, for us, it was a wonderful time of us just being able to talk. Um, Elisa and I have a lot of dreams and, you know, we have, haven't, we haven't been intentional over the last two, three years. You know, a lot of stuff we do is just sort of, you know, we do it and, uh, there's, there's really no plan <laughs> at times. Mm-hmm. And and sometimes we have a plan, then we just don't stick to it. But it was just really good for us to, to really talk about what we see ourselves doing here in the next couple of years, where we want to be. And as a husband, to see Elisa shine like she did yesterday was just fun. Uh, it was just... It, it was just one of those moments where I can just sort of step back and go, wow, that's... That was really amazing because Elisa, for the most part, and I think she would agree with this years ago and even up to maybe even a year or so ago, she didn't understand like my need to be around people and talk and hang out with people. <sighs> she she would have rather just sat on a couch and read her book uh-huh. and that would drive me nuts because I wanted to be out and talking and mingling and it's almost switched a little bit. Sometimes I do so much behind the computer and I do a lot of face-to-face stuff on my everyday business um, that I sometimes just want to hang out and step back. But yesterday, Elisa just shined and 
it was just fun. And gosh, again, amazing, amazing folks we met there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and it's, you know, intentionality goes so far in your marriage. Yeah. Whatever aspect of intimacy you're working on, when you make it intentional, it takes on value in your marriage. It has value in your marriage. When you say, you know what, honey, we need to talk about our finances. They're really good. They're really bad, but we need to get on the same page and we need to have a plan. Mm -hmm. Honey, you know what? I want to be, you know, I want to have better communication with you. I, I want us to sit down and talk. Maybe, maybe you're not talking at all. Maybe once a week is where you need to get started. And just say, you know what, can we, can we say Thursday nights are going to be our talk night? You know, whether it's like our friends, Debbie and Sport, who, you know, they do the clear the slate. You know, if there are any issues, they have a clear the slate session where they just, you know, talk about it and work through it. You know, for us, it's this hour behind the mics. Mm-hmm. You know, that's, I, I even made... Oh, yeah. Okay. To you Elisa. guys are going to get a little fired up about this. Go ahead. Tell them what you suggested <laughs> this week. So, Go ahead. Oh. So we we do have a lot on our plates. And one thing that we are just trying to do is be very intentional, like Lisa said, on what we're doing with our businesses. And so we're not spread so thin and not getting anything done. Um, you know, the goal with the things we do online is to make money because Mm -hmm. we want to support our family doing this. So, um, one, we've been doing it for 18, 19 months now. I don't know. Yeah. It'll probably be about, yeah. It's going to be two years, like in October, November. Yeah. So I'm looking at, okay, well we're at episode 72 and one of my things to her was like, you know what? Maybe at episode 100, we just call it quits. It's we're done. And one has done its, has run its course. And oh my gosh. Okay. It's getting my blood boiling with him just suggesting that right now. And I even know that we've already talked through this. Yeah. Because I was just like, no, I'm not, that's, that's a non-negotiable. Maybe we don't grow one into the speaking, you know, program or we don't, you know, write another book. Who knows what the future is going to hold for it. Although if you want us to speak, we'll speak. (laughs) Yeah, I'm not saying that we won't speak, but I'm just saying, you know, at at different times we've talked about really putting our energy into getting speaking engagements and we've talked about writing another book and we've talked about all of these things that we could do. And what I told Tony when he made that suggestion after I um, calmed down and, you know, regained my composure, I said, no. I said, you know what? The thing for one is that, or the thing about one is that this is, this is our time. I mean, we share it with all of you and we are so, uh, words can't even describe how much you all mean to us. Mm-hmm. But this time that we sit across from each other at our dining room table, you know, looking glamorous with our headphones on and a microphone in front of our mouth, this is our time. It's intentional. It's and, intentional. And like, it's calendared. You know, it has to happen on either a Sunday or a Monday night because we know that all of you are expecting a podcast to be posted in time for your daily commute on Tuesday morning. Right. We know because we get the email sometimes on Monday nights, just making sure it's going to be up in time on Tuesday. Um, But you see how we've made it intentional and this helps us. You know, if we look at our week, there is no other day during the week where we sit down like this. There isn't, Mm -mm. you know, during the week we have our times when we're talking you know, before bed, mm-hmm. we'll do our spiritual intimacy. You know, we're still hitting our couple's devotional Bible two or three times a week. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to be doing that tonight. Yeah. Yep. So, you know, but this is the one time during the week where we really sit down and this is our emotional and in intellectual intimacy time. So you see, there, there's so much that goes on when it comes to all forms of our intimacy. Mm-hmm. And these seven-day challenges and the whole point of we did it, for those of you who do do a challenge, and we're going to open this up more. For those of you who do a seven days of sex challenge, call. We want to hear you scream, we did it. And we got, we got a call this week, and we're going to put that up here soon. But for those of you who are going... We need a shot in the arm when it comes to our spiritual intimacy. We are going to take a week and we're going to get the devotional Bible. 
or, or work, whatever, whatever you, tool you want to use, whatever tool you want to use. And we are going to sit down every day, morning, night, whenever it works for you guys. Mm-hmm. And we are going to make spiritual intimacy a priority so we can launch off of that. Because what does it become? You know what it becomes for us when we did the seven days of sex challenge and the 60 days of sex challenge, we're like, what do we do next? Right. What do we do next? And that's where the intimacy lifestyle came up. Just like anything else that you attack when it comes to your, the different forms of intimacy, you launch from that seven days and you attack it after that. It's some form of an intimacy lifestyle. It doesn't need to be sex, but you could launch from a spiritual intimacy seven day challenge to twice a week after that. You see what I'm saying though? Because you are spending so much time in it over a course of seven days, you learn so much. What do you like? How does it work? Mm -hmm. How do we pray together? What times are we doing it? It's condensed. You're not learning this over a course of, you know, a month. You're learning it in a week. Right. And then you launch into the lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Okay, we are going to read our Bible two days a week. This is how we're going to do it. We're going to calendar it. We're going to put it in there. It's going to become a priority. You work on these at different times. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it sounds like a lot, I know. But you know what? Our marriages are worth it. And if we focus on one area of it, of our intimacies... That's, I think, where we lose sight of the wonders and the greatness that our marriages hold. Mm -hmm. And Elisa and I can attest to that. You know, we can attest to that because we didn't realize that we needed to be in all of these different areas. We didn't realize that. We didn't we, we didn't have the emotional intimacy like we do now five years ago. Oh, not even close. You know, recreational intimacy was all about me there was no the the recreational intimacy part was alisa i'm gonna go work out you dig it you know you stay home with the kids i'm working out or or even you know years before we had kids when we would go hiking and i don't know if i've ever shared this with you guys on the air but when we first started hiking Mm. my dear sweet husband with those great legs that he you know cycles with and everything he would blaze a trail we'd start off together And then he'd be gone. I'm like, oh, I guess I'm just going to keep walking. And so he'd, you know, get to a point and he would stop and rest. And then I'd get to that point and he, like, no rest for Elisa. He would just hop up like, okay, let's go. I'm rested. And I'm just grumbling under my breath, shooting daggers at his back as he once again blazes off and disappears into the wild blue yonder. This was how we hiked. Yep. You know, and it's amazing that I logged so many miles with this man because, and, and I mean, obviously a testament to the fact that I enjoyed hiking. Um, <laughs> yes. But, you know, apparently I was a solo hiker who happened to be married because we didn't spend a lot of time hiking together. You know, and it wasn't until we'd been hiking for a couple of years that Tony actually realized that maybe hiking behind me mm-hmm. would be a good idea, a good way for us to spend time together. And there were times where literally I was so fatigued that he would push me up the trail. You know, one hand on my pack, pushing me up. Just that little extra bit of support. Mm -hmm. But when he changed his perspective, it changed our experience. When he didn't have to be first and just seeing what was up around the bend. When he became intentional about where he was. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, hiking was a lot more fun with him. Our backpacking trips were like, ooh. So this is like what couples do. They like talk while they're hiking and, you know, see right. things together. So maybe you're doing things solo right now. Maybe it's recreational intimacy. Maybe it's financial intimacy. Maybe you're the one that handles all the finances. Your spouse doesn't know, pretends to not care because you haven't let them in. Maybe it's time to just share. To... to relax some of your control. It doesn't have to be all about you. In fact, when you take it from a spirit of service in your marriage, when you take these different intimacies and say, okay, you know, how can we serve each other? Mm -hmm. You're going to experience such phenomenal growth. 
And it's going to come out in little things. Like today, we're driving to church, and our eight-year-old says to dad, dad, how come you're the one that always drives when we're in the car? Mm -hmm. And Tony's like, well, his first response is, well, I don't always drive. Sometimes your mom drives. And you know, the eight-year-old says, no, dad, you almost always drive. <laughs> and instead of coming back with a witty like, well, son, that's how men do it. Men drive the car. Tony said to him, this is a way that I can serve your mother. Because she's got so much stuff going on sometimes. And so this way, if I'm the one driving, it just gives her a break. It's a spirit of service. Do you think right there that, that changed the emo emotional intimacy of that moment? You better believe it. I've been holding on to that little gem all day. And I don't know what that did for my son because we won't see the effects of that until, you know, 20 years down the road when he's, you know, driving his wife around. But when we approach intimacy from a spirit of service and serving our spouse and not making it about us and being intentional, the strength that you have put into your marriage this week will multiply like you will not believe. Mm -hmm. And your marriage is, uh, it's emotional because the stories that we've been privileged to read this week of the amount of effort and energy that you put into your marriages, if you can do it for one week, you can do it for another week. You can do it for a month. You can do it for a year. You can do it for a lifetime. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to stop when the challenge is over, and it shouldn't stop. If you can make it through a week with kids and work and illness and travel and life, then you can do it for a lifetime. Yeah, I totally agree. So make it, make a challenge, make your own challenge, figure out the area that you guys want to step up to the plate, figure it out. And when you do it, we want to hear you call us and you can say what area you're working on. And we want to hear the, we did it folks. This is your show. This is about you. Lisa and I just get behind these mics and just share from our hearts, but this is about you. This is about your marriages. This is about you guys growing. And before we close though, I want to play a, 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 we did it because again, this is about you guys. Hi, this is James and Janet Witter from East Berlin, Pennsylvania. Just calling in to say, we did it. We did it. Awesome Thanks, guys. Tony and Elisa for the challenge that you put us through. And, uh, we have, uh, greatly, uh, enjoyed it and have learned a lot of the from you guys and uh, everyone else that posted on the site. Thank you very much and looking forward to when we can do it again sometime. And uh, God bless all of you other folks and couples that uh, participated and hopefully it uh, strengthened your marriage and you've learned a lot from it. Remember, keep your spouse number one in your marriage and make them the priority. Thank you. All right, you guys. So that's it for tonight. And gosh, you know, we love you guys. Thanks for listening to the One Extraordinary Marriage Podcast. We would love to hear from you. You can go ahead and give us a call at area code 858-876-5663 or send us an email to info at oneextraordinarymarriage.com. The website is oneextraordinarymarriage.com. And while you're there, you can sign up for our Marriage Minute Monday newsletter and you can also purchase Tony and Elisa's new book, Stripped Down. It's available now in print, audio, and ebook formats. Also, the One Extraordinary Marriage podcast has sponsorship opportunities available now. If your business is interested in sponsoring this podcast, please contact us at oneextraordinarymarriage.com.